um, during the touring cycle of What Doesn't Kill You for many reasons. Uh, one of the reasons being I did not feel strongly about the material we were playing and um, I just felt it was time for me to do something that suited me better. And uh, I had uh, a whole bunch of different ideas for things that I wanted to do outside of Candiria and I thought this was the perfect time. I wasn't happy with the record, I wasn't happy with uh, the band we were touring with. I was going through a whole bunch of personal things and um, just all of that together, just uh, it just seemed like the right time to go. Um, well, I was, at the time, I was officially not a member of Candiria, and um, right around Christmas time of 2005, um, I got a call from Carly Coma, and um, he told me that they were working on a new record, and um, he didn't want to do. He didn't want to make the record without me. And I was very flattered and honored, and I was very excited about the idea because although um, I felt that I didn't want to be on the road at the time with Candiria because I was working on other things, I thought it'd be great um, to work on another record with them and sort of, uh, sort of, I guess, sort of redeem myself for the record previous. Uh, for what doesn't kill you, because there was there was I, it was a difficult record for me to make, and I wanted to make a record that I felt strongly about, and um, and it was also you know I mean you know it was there was going to be a, a financial you know benefit, there was going to be an advance, so I was excited about that. I was broke, and um, but mostly I was just really excited about being part of the writing process uh, with Candiria again. writing style uh, for Kiss the Lie is very different than what Candiria fans are used to, um, but there's a very good reason for that. Um, what had happened was, um, when I was approached by Carly and Kenny to um, help write for Kiss the Lie, or we didn't know it was going to be called Kiss the Lie at the time, but what, when I was asked to um, take part in the writing process, um, I was given um, a certain amount of time to put together some ideas and to put together some uh, music that we would base the record on. And, um, you know, usually when you're writing a Candiria record or when we're writing a Candiria record, we're talking like six months. You know, six months or three months, you know, you, you know, it's a lot of time. I mean, so much goes into making a Candiria record. Um, but my time frame was three weeks. And uh, when, when I was told this, you know, I was just like, there's no way it's going to happen. Um, but um, that was it. That was the amount of time we had to put together ideas before we went into pre-production mode, which was, you know, go in and work the songs out with the drummer and the full band and whatnot. And then we would later on go into the actual recording process. So I had three weeks to put together material um, for what we were going to base the record on. And um, I knew that it was just impossible for me to, you know, put together sketches of, of songs, Candiria-style songs, like stuff that would be on, like, 300% density or, or um, process of self-development. I knew it wasn't going to happen. But I was working on other music um, that was either going to wind up being on a Spilocopa record or something else. I was going to just put it somewhere else. I was, gonna, I was just writing on my own stuff, uh, working on my own stuff. And um, that was the music I wound up presenting to the band. And uh, it's very different than what Candiria music usually sounds like. But there's still a, a similar spirit. So um, when I presented it to the band, they were excited about it and they thought it would work. So that's why that happened that way. never produced a record before Kiss the Lie. And um, it was great, um, especially to be part of something on that scale. My first, you know, job producing, or not necessarily my job job producing, but, uh, you know, the, the, pr the producer's job being left in mine and Carly's hands. Um, it was a great honor, and um, it was exciting. 
Um, but I never produced before that. But um, after Kids Will Lie, I wound up producing one other record, which was the Spilacopa debut EP. And um, yeah, it was very exciting. The significance of the uh, cover image, um, I guess, um, it just represents emotionally where I was at um, personally and where other members of the band were at on a personal level. And the cover image is of a woman holding a fishbowl with a small helpless goldfish in it, this evil woman. Um, and uh, I guess the significance is uh, this um, overwhelming power that uh, a person could have on, on, on your life if you allow them to. So that's the significance of the cover. And the significance of the album title, Kiss the Lie, stems from a lyric of the song Sirens, um, which is on the record. The next release on Rising Pulse Records will be another Candy Re release called Toying with the Insanities. And it will be a, um, a four-part vinyl EP series of remixes and reinterpretations, so to speak, by other great artists such as Dalek, K.O. Dot, uh, the Dillinger Escape Plan, uh, Dub Trio, and many other peers and friends and fans and, and just... Uh, many great artists, underground artists, that uh, contributed. And uh, that should be um, coming out hopefully by the end of 2009. Um, so yeah, that's what's next. Thanks for asking.